National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Gator Zone alongside Megan Parler. Jeff Cardozo here with you. We're hanging out at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center pool and it's absolutely gorgeous outside. Wouldn't mind jumping in that pool, but they got some work going on down there and it's been a, a lot of hard work for the men's swim team over the years. Heck, seven years in a row they have been SEC champions. Not too shabby. Yeah, and Brennan Baylog, one of the seniors on the team, part of four SEC yeah. championships. Obviously, the men's swim and dive team are wrapping up their season, and he's wrapping up his Gator career all the way from Lincoln, Nebraska. When it comes to swimming, it's all in the family for Brennan Baylog. My parents coached when I was young, and all my siblings did it. Um, we, you know, the team back in Michigan is where I was born, and I was kind of just at the pool whenever my siblings were there, whenever my parents were coaching and I would kind of play in the diving well as everybody was practicing and uh, I ended up you know, transitioning from playing in the diving well and over to uh, practicing myself. Having older sisters who swam at the collegiate level, Baylog knew that's the path he wanted to take as well. And ever since he started high school, Brennan had his eyes fixed on the orange and blue. I kind of heard about the reputation of Florida, you know, they, they work hard. I, I always have valued hard work and I think hard work gets you results. And so that's, that's kind of, that was kind of like the seed uh, that got my mind on Florida. And it just kind of built through, uh, through high school. And once I started communications with them, with, with recruiting and everything, it was just super exciting. Brennan was coached by his parents his whole life. So coming to the University of Florida was quite the adjustment for Baylog. We definitely kept coaching, coaching swimmer at the pool and parent and son at home. We did a really good job of separating that, which I thought was important. But at the pool, it was just a very open communication environment. You know, going from being coached by your parents primarily to being coached by Coach Troy is much different. So yeah, freshman year was quite a transition. He came from a very small program, coming to one of the best D1 schools in the country. It's a, it's, 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 it's a change of pace, of course. Um, you know, going from high school to college, especially in a really competitive environment as Florida, is like always fast pace, because um, you have so many good athletes. To see him handle that, of course, it's, it's a roller coaster for a freshman coming in, but uh, he's handled it well. Brennan's swimming background has not just been an advantage for him, as the coaching staff values his input as well. He's a good guy to bounce stuff off, uh, which I've done this year, and uh, the information we got, got received back from him were pretty on point. So uh, the background, my mom and dad being coaches, has helped uh, not only him, he's been uh, pretty helpful to me as far as uh, on a day-to-day -day operation, and we're, what, what we're doing, does this work, uh, why don't we do this, to, to change stuff up a little bit uh, in practices, and he's been uh, a good guy to have around. Since his freshman season, Baylog says the biggest change he has seen in himself is his leadership role on this team. I think from the beginning, I've kind of always been like a leader by example. I usually don't like to get in people's faces. I don't, I don't think it's typically helpful. I usually just try to do what I can and try to be a good example for everybody else and hopefully they, they, they you know see in the process and like you know this is this is good that, you, that he's doing this maybe I should do that. From the little kid watching swim practice to the senior wrapping up his collegiate career, Brennan Baylog's passion for this sport never wavered and neither did his love for the Florida Gators. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Granath. Well, thank you, Shelby. And speaking of a senior men's swimmer, now we're going to flip sides, women's side, okay. a freshman, and this one's a diver. Yeah, she is. Came to uh, Florida all the way from Venezuela. And really good uh, career down there in high school, sort of, if that's what you call it. Four-time champion down there in Venezuela. And let's hope she's a uh, four times a million <laughs> champion here in Gainesville. Growing up in Venezuela, Elizabeth Perez wanted to be just like her older sister. I'm a star because my sister practiced diving before, so it's like 
she inspired me all the time and she want when she go to the practice like all the time like oh I want to go with you like I, I don't know it's like I like it. As she got older Perez let her diving speak for itself. She was a Venezuela national champion four years in a row. She competed in the 2016 World Cup in Brazil as well as the 2018 Junior World Championships in Ukraine. You feel so great when you represent your country, it's like awesome. Like when you listen to people say something like, oh, you're a great diver and you feel better, you feel good, you feel excellent diver, but like you, you feel excellent for your country, it's awesome. Now, to know the whole story about how Perez, a diver from Venezuela, ended up in Gainesville, Florida, you have to ask head diving coach Brian Galuli. We met actually for the first time, we met in Cuba. She was on the Venezuela national team. I was coaching for the U.S. age group team at the time and um, met her a little bit there. And actually, that's where I met her sister, who's our volunteer assistant coach, who's now my wife. Coming to UF was a long process for Perez, but due to her work ethic, she made it happen. You know, her English wasn't great. We've been working on it for a couple years now of getting her ready to get to, to be here, having her pass her, her SATs and qualify academically. And, and she did that just based on hard work. Adjusting to a new language, a new culture, and a new country was not easy for Elizabeth. But having her sister and brother-in-law on the pool deck every day has been a comfort for Perez. Like honestly, like I feel so good when she's here and then she's like, you can do it when I feel bad. And he's like, no, you can do it. It's like, oh yeah, I can. She's my sister. We are really close. She's like my best friend, honestly. And then it's like great when you, you have the person like believe you, believe like yourself. And it's like great, like, oh my gosh, it's awesome. To have a support system behind her, I think has helped tremendously. You know, her sister, uh, my wife, they're, they're very close. As close as I've, I've seen family members. I think typically, you know, Venezuelan families are very tight. And, um, and they're no exception. So it's been great for both of them to have that support system around them. Brian with me is like awesome. We have a really good relationship, like coach and family, it's like, it's great. We're coach athlete at the pool and I treat her no differently than I treat the other athletes. But then we leave it at the pool and we're able to, to spend quality time as a family after that. She's far away from home, but Perez knows the University of Florida is where she's meant to be. I feel so good right here, it's like my, my second home, like it's different, the college is different than Venezuela, but like in the, I have the hockey center, I have this practice, I have weights, I have the like training rooms, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's a lot, it's so good, it's like, it's so great, I love UF, and then, I don't know, like I feel so good, and I'm so proud for Gator, I don't know, I'm so proud for that. Elizabeth Perez grew up wanting to be just like her big sister, and now she's living out her dream, at one of the top universities in the country with her family by her side. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Granath. All right, Shelby, thank you very much. Really looking forward to seeing her for the next four years and really looking forward to hanging out a lot longer with you on Gator Zone. Yeah, we got to get through our first break, but we have much more right after this. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everyone, and welcome back into Gator Zone. Jeff and I made our way over to McEwen Stadium, hanging out in the batting cages where our next athlete surely spends a lot of time. And one of my favorite names to say on the baseball team, Nelson Maldonado. And Jeff, you're the man that knows all about him. Yeah, I've gotten to say his name uh, plenty of times over the last four years. One of the senior captains for Kevin O'Sullivan. Been to Omaha every year that he's been here, and he's had a uh, a magical ride here in Gainesville. He's had over a thousand career at bat, so has certainly done this a lot. So let's uh, swing on in and hear about Nelson. The Gators designated hitter Nelson Maldonado has been a staple in Florida's lineup since his freshman year. Now in his senior season, Nelson is in the top 10 for games played in school history and is on pace to finish his career in the top three with the potential to be number one on the list. The consistency in Nelson's career makes sense for a guy who got an early start in baseball and has dedicated much of his life to it. It has been the only sport I've ever played too. You know, I've never really ventured off trying to play any other sport. You know, I've always had a passion for baseball and I've always wanted to keep pursuing, you know, my, my dream and, and playing in the pros. 
While seeing Nelson in orange and blue every day for the Gators seems like the norm now, nearing the end of his time in high school, Nelson wasn't sure what the future would hold. Getting recruited here was really like a slow process for me, or getting recruited anywhere was a slow process. I didn't have any offers coming out of high school, and you know, I was, I was basically on, on an isolated island, really. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what I was gonna do after high school, and you know, one day Kevin O'Sullivan called me, and he was like, hey, Nelson, uh, um, I would like to, you know, watch you play, and you know, they ended up coming to see me play, and uh, they offered me right after that, so. It was kind of, I was kind of shocked too, you know, how quick everything happened, but I knew this was the place for me and, you know, I've been a Gator fan all my life, so I knew I'd fit right in. In his freshman season, Nelson made 59 starts in the outfield, followed by 63 starts in the outfield his sophomore season. But starting last year, Nelson has transitioned into the team's primary designated hitter, a role that is quite different from many others on the diamond. A DH is probably another mental, you know, uh, I would say position, mental position, because, uh, you know, you don't get, get to take it out on defense. Like, if you have a bad at bat, you can't just go out on defense and make it up. So you, I feel like you have to be mentally tough to be in that DH role, you know, and uh, always be warmed up in the, in the dugout and always be ready to go. Um, you have to get into it. You know, you have to be a fan for, your, for the guys out on the field. And basically, yeah, you just got to keep your head um, held high at all, at all times and Nelson has provided a number of energizing moments for his team over the years in all of his roles. Uh, that's, that's the moment you live for, you know, and uh, gratefully, you know, I've, I've had a lot of moments like that here in my career at UF, and, you know, those moments, you know, I, always, I would always cherish, and those are probably the, you know, the biggest highlights of my career. Just because he's such a nice kid, it fires us up that Nelson's happy, and um, we like to see Nelly happy because that means he's doing good. Yeah, obviously it's fun to watch. You love, I mean, it's baseball. You gotta have fun with it. So I love the way Nelly plays. I love the way Blake plays. I think it's, it's fun to watch them both for sure. I think he just attacks every at bat and attacks, attacks the day and is very positive and keeps the dugout uh, loose, but like focused. And I think having him in the dugout as much as we do really helps as having a leader in there and helping us through everything. Throughout his UF career, Nelson has had fellow senior and co-captain Blake Reese along for the ride. Nelson is definitely one of the better friends I've had, not just because we're seniors together, but throughout my entire career here. Uh, we come from fairly different backgrounds, but we have a lot of things in common. Um, you know, I think our, our outlooks on life are very similar, and he's a, he's a really, really good dude. And um, I, I couldn't be more thankful that to be a senior, to have one guy to come back with me, that, that it would be Nelson. So that's, that's a really cool experience for me. There have been many memories made on the field for Nelson while at Florida, and he'll take more than just those with him when he leaves. Part of the lifelong friendships I made, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys that have been in and out of here that, you know, I've, I've been able to connect with on a personal level. And even the coaches, really, they've helped me out and uh, they've helped me become a better man. And, I'm forever grateful for that. For Gator Zone, I'm Gareth Gutierrez. Well, Nelly has been awesome. And just like Nelly back in the day where I grew up to, if you want to go and take a ride with me, he has uh, certainly given Gator fans a, a really nice ride and hopefully will end his career on a, a really good note. So can we stay here for top plays? I love it so much. I know this is one of your favorite places, but the next place we're going to go after the break, I don't know. You like it there. Okay. And I, I have an idea for top plays. We'll see you guys over there. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everybody, welcome back to Gator Zone. Megan and Jeff here with you, and I was really, really upset with you. Just I'm gonna admit this on the air that you made me leave baseball, but then you handed me an orange and blue tennis racket. You totally redeemed yourself. And Jeff, we're here to talk about one of Roland Thornquist's sophomore tennis players, Victoria Emma. She comes from Maple, so Florida girl stayed here and got a ton of experience her freshman year and now in her sophomore year, making the Gators better each day. Growing up in Florida, sophomore Victoria Emma wanted to take her talents outside of the Sunshine State. But after visiting the University of Florida with her dad, she knew this program is where she wanted to be. I never wanted to go to school in Florida. 
I mean, I got contacted by University of Florida and FSU as the Florida schools, but I never wanted to stay in Florida. I was like, if tennis can take me somewhere else, then I would love to go somewhere else. Kind of like did a little bit of research on here and I was like, wow. I knew they were great, but I didn't know that they were this great. And I came here and I watched the girls play against Southern California. And I was just like, I was sitting with my dad and I was like, this is it. Like, I want to go on the court with these girls. I just knew when I came here and Kate took me around on a golf cart and I was just like so comfortable with everybody that was here. The team, the culture that this school has, not just in tennis, but every single sport. And I just knew that I wanted to be a part of it. Making her debut at the U.S. Junior Open and other tournaments didn't come without some initial nerves, but a lot of Emma's confidence comes from her extensive experiences in international competitions and environments. It was definitely overwhelming. I was very nerve-wracking. I played it two years in a row, actually, so it was hard my first year. I was so nervous, but it was, I mean, it was a great experience. I wouldn't, I wish I could have played more. Tennis has brought me so many new experiences. It definitely helped with the experience of playing in front of a crowd because I feel like sometimes in juniors, like in junior tennis, we don't get that big of crowds, but at the international level, when you get to some of like those grade ones, grade A's, I mean, you definitely feel that crowd. And I, that definitely helped like going into the US Open and also like coming here and having a bunch of fans watching us play. From a young age, Emma remembers her dad being a strong source of support, which reaches now into her freshman and sophomore seasons as a Gator. My dad definitely helped me a lot my freshman year. I mean, especially the coaches here too. I had a lot of struggles in my freshman year. I started out like okay, and then I had some really good matches like against George. That was probably the best match that I've played. And then after that, I had like a downfall and it was just, it was really, really hard. And my dad tried to help me with the mental side and he just has experiences that I have no experience in and some people haven't reached that level and the fact that I have my dad who has, he can help me so much. Like I can call him for anything, especially the mental side. Coming into her sophomore season, Emma recognized that there was a lot of room for growth with a young but talented team. But being one of three returners, she knew there was a lot to teach and learn throughout the season. We only have three girls, including myself, that have been on a Florida Gator team before. So it's definitely an adjustment, plus we're super young, but I think that in the long run, we're gonna be really good. But um, I think that the freshmen, they're not nervous. They're, they're just like excited to be out there. Like I think they really wanna buy into what it means to be a Florida Gator. So that's, I mean, everybody here does, and I think that's what can really help us grow as a team. We work so hard and we just enjoy it and we all love it. And I mean, working with Roe and DB is just such an honor. Like they're great coaches and their relationship definitely contributes to how close our team is because we're all just like a huge family, including the coaches and even like the staff. They just really try and like instill that Florida Gator way into all the players that come through here. And then once they leave, it kind of carries on. Emma's contributions have not gone unnoticed by her teammates and coaches, and her leadership has made quite an impact on this 2019 season. For Gator Zone, I'm Katie Leahy. All right, Jeff, pretty impressive. Thank you. We wish the women's tennis team the best of luck as they finish up their SEC season. And Jeff, I was just thinking we could keep the mic on you, have you play a tennis match, get some real gems out of that, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, certainly will there be uh, some fun stuff and some not so fun stuff. Not that good at tennis, but there's a guy on the men's team that's legit. And we decided to mic him up to hear his thoughts on uh, hitting a little yellow ball back and forth and doing it really, really well. Here's some thoughts from McLean Kessler. Oh, oh. Go Gators! <laughs> nice. Eh. Ah. You look beautiful, with that. Thank you. Don't ever turn your back on the wall, because the worst thing that's going to happen is the ball's going to just hit you. Go get Earth! Ah. It's not easy playing with a radio attached to your body. Like. Nice. Yeah. Go, Andy. Go, partner. Yeah. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Again, again. I always step in. Oh, you know I'm the best Super Smash Bros. player. Yeah. Good disguise. I thought you were on inside out. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Did you see that butter slice? It's pretty good. It's a joke. Oh. Yeah, no. That's one you gotta hit me in the chest. Go. Go get hers. That's too heavy. It's pretty strong. Go get hers. Yeah, yeah, 
Uh, you boost with the sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits, bro. No! Oh, no! Oh! Yo, uh, you honey! Uh, I always get this guy on the backhand corner. Like, that's physical. Uh, 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 come on! There goes number one racket. You gotta be kidding me! Keep back, keep far back. Just try to block it. Uh, 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 go, get his on three. One, two, three. Hey. Let's go. Come on. Well, Jeff, those segments are always really fun to watch and get to see our student athletes' personalities a little bit better and what goes through their mind when they're playing their <laughs> sport. But we got to get to our last break here on Gator Zone. But it's not too long, so you only have this many minutes to wait for top plays. All right, Mr. Jeffrey Cardozo, I got the wedges on today. I'm feeling tall. I'm ready to get you back at the net. You might have the uh, the wedges on, but uh, they certainly don't make her fast, do they? That's taking advantage of your opponents. So let's see uh, how many uh, Gator student athletes took advantage of their opponents in top plays. Today's top plays are brought to you by Nike. Ready for the one-two, the pitch. Ground ball slowly to first base. Callie now has it. He wins the foot race to the bag. And for the first time in his Gator career, Tommy Mace has gone the distance. A complete game, and Mace was magical tonight. Just one run on three hits. Uh, two hits and five and a third against a good Razorback team. McConnell hits one out towards left. This one might be a little further. Holcomb going back to the track, to the wall. Bye-bye baseball. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Nelly drives one out towards left. This one is long gone. A no-doubter. And Holcomb doesn't even look at it as it flies over the bleachers. The 2-1 pitch to McConnell. Hit well out towards left field. Another no-doubter, a two-home run day for lucky number 13. And the Gators do, in fact, get double digits tonight. It's hit number 15 and runs number 10 and 11. So there you have it, some more top plays. Spring is awesome because there are a million things going on and obviously that makes more really exciting action on the court, field, track, swimming pool, whatever you got going on. Just come follow the Gators and you can do it in many, many ways. As always, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. We hope you guys follow along with us. That'll do it for this episode of Gator Zone. She's my partner. Megan Parler. For the awesome camera work of Gareth Gutierrez, I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you guys next time.